Hi friends, this is Haruka from Planet Education and today I want to uh, give you some updates about how uh, colleges are reacting to the COVID pandemic and how parents and students should be uh, examining their college choices uh, to, you know, to be best prepared. Uh, you, there are a lot of factors that are um, affecting students' decisions about colleges, and and uh, one sobering uh, one sobering comment I read about uh, the CSUs is that now they are thinking of not twelve but eighteen and twenty four month plans. Uh, because even in a scenario uh, that where we find a vaccine, it's not going to be over anytime soon. We don't know uh, how uh, effective a vaccine would be. We don't know uh, who would get it, how much it would cost, and who would pay for it. Um, and all these things just make it more clear that this pandemic is going to have effects that are going to be long lasting, not just uh, we're, we're not going back to 2019. Some things that you need to be aware of is uh, first, is your school, uh, the schools that you're looking at, do they have a lot of international students? Because that's a big factor, that a uh, big factor. Um, some schools like NYU, Columbia, Carnegie Mellon, many of the Ivy League schools, and also many of the uh, UCs have more than 15% international students. That includes you know, UCLA, UC Berkeley, UC San Diego, um, Irvine, Santa Barbara, Davis, all of those have high international populations. Uh, and that means that, you know, in this pandemic, with the uh, ICE, which is the Immigration and Customs Enforcement uh, Organization there, you know, the rules are changing. And between the federal government and just safety, fewer or no international students may be coming uh, this year. And that poses a problem for the universities because, um, well, for many reasons. I mean, international students are an integral part of diversity. They, they, you know, we are living in a global world and we need international students for our, you know, for a vibrant uh, academic community, both in terms of the student community as well as the faculty, right? Uh, and, but from a economic perspective as well, the universities are really depending on international students for revenue. At the end of the day, colleges are also businesses. And so what will, um, what will happen? Um, from the sh from a short term, it may be a good year for out-of-state students who have the money to pay for full tuition. Uh, you know, that, that may, those students may be making up for some of the lost international uh, income. Um, but, and then in terms of admissions, the, due to the, those, what are, what's gonna happen to those international students? Well, men, some of them may defer, or some of them may uh, take a gap year, and that may affect subsequent years, right? The current juniors and sophomores may end up facing more competition because of all the students that have been disrupted this coming year. Number two, another thing to look at is social distancing. How is the university or college uh, that you're looking at, how are the colleges and universities you're looking at managing social distancing? Uh, we know that the larger lectures are all going to be done virtually for safety reasons. Sections, smaller sessions, discussions, they may be okay, but again, uh, you know, the each school will decide how many students can be in a classroom, and there's just a physical limitation, right? How many classrooms are there? Uh, labs and labs and uh, nursing classes may be very limited. Those are the ones that are, you know, if a school says we're going to allow just the, the bare minimum of in-class uh, 
education, that's where it's going to be. So take a look at those, um, uh, those details. How are the dorms being treated? You know, in this pandemic, they're not going to be any doubles, they're gonna be singles. Uh, and in the case of the UC system, which has already had a significant housing issue, UC Berkeley, you uh, see Santa Cruz, Santa Barbara, right? Those urban areas, uh, those campuses in urban areas are more impacted. And uh, this, uh, whereas the ones that are bigger, get out, San Diego, Davis, they are less impacted. Uh, once schools, for the schools where they have decided to open up, some of the things that they're saying are, uh, they're going to open up, they're, they're, they're renting out local hotels and motels for students so that they can social distance. Also, where there are, in general, uh, the high density college campuses are going to be at higher risk and the less density, less, you know, the colleges with less density will be lower risk. Um, but that said, the schools in urban areas, they may have more resources in terms of hospitals in the case of an outbreak, right? If you are out in uh, a rural area, how will you get treated? How will a student get treated if there is um, an outbreak? Uh, you know, sporting events. We now know that they're all getting canceled for the fall semester, but the ones that are most at risk are big contact sports, whether it's like football um, and not just sports, things like chorus where, you know, people's voices and, and you know, spit, that, that can affect uh, safety as well. But the activities that don't uh, require contact, those are the ones that are going to be first to um, recover, you know, and in, in sports, something like cross country track, for example, right? Um, third, another thing to look at is how is the campus going to manage the outbreaks? You, sh you can look at different universities to see what their plans are because they are getting built out on a, on a weekly basis. They're becoming more and more robust because the question is not, if there's an outbreak, it's when there's an outbreak. Um, each university should have a plan to figure out how many COVID positive students can they manage. Uh, when that happens, what are they going to do? Most likely they're going to isolate quarantine, you know, isolate the student in a specific uh, location, uh, maybe a certain floor or a certain building, uh, and they need to get treated. Uh, those students that are found to be positive are going to get treated there. They're not going to be sent home, right? And if it, if it turns out that there is a, a case or an outbreak in your student's university or college, um, what is the plan? You know, they have to somehow figure out how to quarantine people in that dormitory. So it is very sobering as a parent to figure out, oh, what are you going to do if, if, you're, if, you're, if your child gets sick? But um, you know, these are kind of questions that you need to ask. Remember that things are very fluid right now, um, just, because, you know, this, just because there's no cases right now doesn't mean that it's not going to happen later. And laws are changing. Um, on, on level on the federal level the state level uh, as well if you look at New York State they right now they have a quarantine so if you are coming from a state that has um, uh, a certain number of uh, you know cases and the cases are rising then you are required to quarantine for 14 days and that includes California um, right now if, for example, if you are part of the freshman class at Cornell, you are there is a checklist for incoming students, and one of those things is that you're supposed to stay quarantined at home for 14 days. So, you know, 
if this is your first time going to New York City, you're not going to be able to spend, you know, of course, New York City right now is a ghost town, but this is not an opportunity for you and your family to check out the Northeastern US before you start classes. No, that's absolutely not the case. So you need to look at the checklists that some universities have uh, posted on their websites to fo and follow them for everybody's safety. And things can change at the drop of a hat. You know, um, there was only something like two cases in, in Tompkins County, which is where Cornell is located uh, two weeks ago, but now there's a, a small outbreak. And um, UCSD, which was the most proactive of the UC campuses, um, last time I spoke, we said that they were still um, on the, had a plan to uh, open, but now they are also going to close. I mean, they, have, they were very, very proactive. They, were ha they had a plan to test 65,000 students, faculty, administration on a monthly basis, and they're a very spread out campus, right? San Diego's campus. And so I think they, they believe that they could do it. But even uh, the last holdout, they're not able to do that. Uh, so it's a, it's a very fluid situation. Um, I hope this helps. And, you know, I, it, it, it's part of my mission. My passion is to help students and families with their college admissions process. Um, this is a, you know, more than ever, I think it's important for families to work with college counselors, uh, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or in a group. Um, I will, I'm also the host of College Knowledge Webinars, and I encourage you to uh, share this video and uh, share, uh, like my, like my Planet Education page, and uh, keep vigilant and continue on with your college admissions journey. Thank you.